This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 6, Section 1, Part 2, Metals, Nonmetals, and Metalloids. So in your packet, again, pause the video, fill in those blanks, and then play to hear my words. So you should know by now that groups are those vertical columns, and there's 18 total on the periodic table. The periods are horizontal rows, and there are seven total. Remember, those bottom two rows really are attached to period six and seven as the main part of the periodic table. So just as a reminder, groups go down, periods go across. And I like to remember that um, periods are at the end of a sentence, right? You read sentences left to right. So if you're reading um, a sentence or reading the periodic table, the periods are at the end of a sentence, so at the end of a row. So right now you're going to need the blank periodic table at the end of your packet. It is labeled metals, nonmetals, metalloids. You're also going to need to grab some either colored pencils or crayons. And if you don't have pencils or crayons available, please do not use markers because it's going to bleed through to the other side. And we're also going to do coloring and information on the other blank periodic table that's on the back side um, or the next page in your packet. Um, but you could also use creativity. So maybe if you have colored pens or if you only have a pencil and or a pen, I'm going to show you how you can be creative uh, so you can understand your periodic table and how you're going to fill that in. So again, pause, make sure you have your blank periodic table at the end of the packet and um, either creativity or colored pencils. So the first thing to do is, again, there's two blank periodic tables at the end of your packet. Make sure to label all of the 18 groups. Again, I'm just putting numbers on top of the 18 groups. And I'm going to also make myself a key. So in this case, I did numbers in red. So I'm going to have my red numbers be group numbers. And on the side here, I have blue numbers, one through seven. And then again, six and seven on the bottom here for these bottom two rows are part of six and seven over here and I'm going to label that blue those blue numbers as period numbers so somehow or another you have to make sure you understand your periodic table that there's 18 groups again those are the columns and there are seven periods and those are the rows so whether you do it by colors or you do it just by information so pause the video and make sure you do that on both sides Okay, so at this point you should have paused, you should have written all 18 and all 7. So again, groups going down, please do not put these arrows in, I'm just giving you a visual here, making sure you understand the groups go down, and again those periods go across. So again, today's periodic table should really look like that. Remember those bottom two rows really are part of the main periodic table, but they're pulled out just to save space. So how many elements then are there in the second period? So find the second period and hopefully you came up with eight. How about the sixth period? So technically, ladies and gentlemen, again, that sixth period is going to have 32 elements. It's going to be here. These two rows are on the bottom, but again, that's still part of period six. You have this main section and then this main section. So I'm going to show you two ways in order how to do this. So on your blank periodic table, you're going to have to find these spots on your periodic table and either color them or be creative. But let me remind you or let me make sure you understand that you are not coloring hydrogen because that is not a metal. And in the stair step line, which we're, we are going to refer to often, these two also keep blank. They are not metals. So I did a bloom. And again, you're going to make yourself a key. However, if you are coloring in, it does not have to be blue. It could be any color you want, but I would shade it in lightly. This time I would shade it in lightly, and there's a reason for that. But if you do not have any crayons or coloring pencils, you can also be creative and put a shape in there. Now, I just did a triangle, but you may put in whatever shape you want. You can put a heart, you can put a diamond, you can put a clover. It's up to you. So right now, pause the video. Make sure to pick out those particular elements on the periodic table. You don't have to write in the elements. What we're doing is making a visual understanding the parts or classification of those elements. So make sure to either color lightly a particular color or write in a shape and again make yourself a key and give yourself some space for a key because there's going to be a think of about five I think there's like four or five besides the groups and number uh, periods uh, to put on here so pause and do that 
So now you should have paused the video and you should have filled in all of those elements that represent metals. Now, why did I, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I had a little thing here. Get it? Cu is the element symbol for copper. So why did I say to color in lightly? Because the transition metals now, I colored in a little bit darker. So the transition metals are groups 3 through 12. So you can either do a border or colored in darker. And then again, make yourself a key. Now, for those of you who do not have crowns or coloring pencils, what I did now is I put a circle around that a triangle that I made. So why did I do that? Because I want to know that these elements are still classified as metals, but more, um, more detail would be a transition metal. So again, pause the video and make yourself a key. Okay, let's go on to the next section. The next section are these inner transition metals. And notice we're just following the packet of notes that you just took, right? You just took notes on metals, transition metals, and inner transition metals. So now we're just trying to figure out where are they located on the periodic table. So again, these bottom two rows, I colored in just even slightly darker. And again, for those of you who do not have that um, coloring ability, um, you can just do this. So what I did was take that circle and kind of squished it and make it an oval. So again, it's slightly different than the metals and the transition metals. So pause the video and make sure to do that. Next section is the non-metals, and remember, hydrogen is that odd man out. He's odd number one, so he's going to also be yellow because he's part of the non-metals. And again, ladies and gentlemen, it does not have to be yellow. You can use any color you want. Just make sure you have yourself a key. And make sure, again, the ones that are touching the stair-step line, make sure that they stay blank, okay? And again, if you do not have something to color, I just made a shape. Okay, so you should have paused the video and filled in all those non-metals. Again, don't forget that hydrogen guy there. And now the last thing is metalloids. Again, I did them in red, but you may choose whatever color you wish, or like I did, I made like the infinity sign. So all of my metalloids are infinity signs as well. So make yourself a key. So you should have labeled your metals, transition metals, inner transition metals, non-metals and metalloids. So that's five different things besides the groups and periods, right? You should still have your 18 groups and your one through seven, six, seven down here for your period numbers. Okay, so just so you can see or visualize those classes of elements, again, here's your metals. They are gonna be located to the left of that stair-step line. The non-metals are to the right of that stair-step line. Your metalloids touch the stair-step line with those two exceptions, aluminum and polonium. Notice those were the two exceptions that are also in your notes. So what is the purpose of that stair-step line? Hmm. Guys, it's really just to separate those metals and non-metals. And the elements that touch that stair-step line have very uh, properties of both, I should say, metals and non-metals, depending on its situation. So something like silicon is used in computer chips. Well, it's used in computer chips because it acts like a metal. It's a good like circuit board. It's good for electricity. However, it's not very magnetic, right? Non-metals are not magnetic where metals are. So it, it kind of possesses properties both of metals and non-metals, and it's going to be helpful in certain situations, kind of like those computer chips. So, but really the purpose of that stair-step line is just to have some kind of separation. So isn't that neat? This periodic table, besides being all these elements, gives us a, a good organization of these elements and patterns. So in your practice problems, now you're going to need both that real periodic table that has the element symbols on them. Um, to, whether if you don't have mine and get one on the on the online or what or on your agenda, whatever you need. Um, but a real periodic table that shows your element symbols and names. And of course, keep the one that you just filled in to be able to classify them. So as a reminder, groups go up and down like columns and periods go across left and right like you're reading a sentence. So again, just to visualize, groups go up and down and periods left and right. So we have these elements here. We're going to find them on the periodic table. We're going to figure out or uh, distinguish their group number, their period number, and then decide what classification are they. Are they metals, non-metals, or metalloids? Okay, so sodium. 
pause the video and find sodium on your real periodic table. Hopefully you found him right here. So what is the group number? One, bada bing. What is the period number going across? Three, good job. Now, sodium is to the left of the stair step case, okay? And it's not in any one of those, so it's definitely a metal. Let's put it this way, right? It's left to the stair step line, so it's definitely a metal. And it's not part of the transition or inner, so we're just going to label it as a regular old metal. Okay, pause the video, find antimony. That's a weird guy. That's another weird um, element symbol. Hopefully you found him right here, SB. Okay, so what is the group number? Again, groups are up and down columns, so that's gonna be 15 and period. Now again, period, I did not put the numbers on this side, so I have to go all the way back here to the left and it is period five. Okay, so it touches the stair step line, so we wanna remember if it touches the stair step line, most likely it's a metalloid, but make sure it's not aluminum or polonium because those are our exceptions. So it is a metalloid, we're gonna go with that. All right, find iron. Hopefully he's a little bit easier to find because he's like Fifi and Ferris, like the iron pigs. All right, so group number eight, very good. And period number four. So hopefully that is really getting easy for you guys. Okay, so he's to the left of the stair step line, so he would be considered a metal. However, because he's in groups three through 12, he's also considered a transition metal. So not only a metal, but more detail, a transition metal. All right, helium's the last guy. Should have found him over here. Again, he is group 18, so we're gonna label him as 18, and he is in the very, very first uh, going across row, so that would be the first period. Okay, so he's to the right of the stair step line, so he is a non-metal. So hopefully that makes sense, and again, we'll have more practice in class. So we want to also remember that if you are asked about two elements, would they have similar chemical or physical properties? Well, to know that, we would see if those elements are in the same group or in the same period. Hopefully you thought to yourself the same group. If they're in the same group, most likely they're going to have very similar chemical and physical properties. So let's look at these practice problems. I'm giving you two elements. You're gonna to have to find them on the periodic table where they're located. And do you think they would be similar properties? And then yes, no, why? So find iron and bromine on the periodic table. Hopefully you pause the video and found them. Again, using your two fingers. Um, and they are not gonna have similar properties because they are not in the same group as well as iron is a metal and bromine is a non-metal. So they will definitely have different properties. All right, can you find fluorine and chlorine on your periodic table? Hopefully you did. And would they have similar properties? Absolutely, because they're in the same group. So we're actually gonna even give them a name. We're gonna call them the halogens, huh? So we're gonna see that soon. All right, how about nitrogen and phosphorus? Hopefully you paused and found them on your real periodic table. They are in the same group, so they are definitely gonna have similar chemical and physical properties. All right, how about lithium and magnesium? Hmm. So hopefully you paused and found them on the periodic table. So this is a trickier one. This one's a yes and no answer, right? The yes, because they're both metals, but not so much because they're both going to be in different groups of metals, group one versus group two. And you're going to find out that group one is a little bit more reactive than group two. So yes, they're going to have similar properties because they're metals. Yes, they're going to have similar reactivity, but one's going to be slightly different than the other. And again, we're going to call lithium's group the alkali metals and the magnesium group the alkaline earth metals. So they're even given a different name justifying that the properties are going to be slightly different. All right, and again, comparing all metals or non-metals or metalloids, you can't really do that because if we take gold and we put it into water, it's not reactive at all. And this is why most of us can wear gold jewelry. However, if we put potassium in water, we really get a violent reaction. So again, some things are going to be similar, but some things are going to be quite different. All right, we will see you in class.